Here's the character I've made recently, and this is how it started. After watching this video, you will know exactly how to turn complex into simple objects and how you can use it for your own projects, like this bike for example. Looks pretty complex, we have these cables in here, how would we simplify this? Well, first of all, we have two rings for the wheels or for the tires. Then of course we also have a seat and we have this little frame here in the middle. And of course we also have a handlebar. So if you were to simplify this, I would say it would, could look something like this. You can see it's way, way simpler, but it still has the characteristic of a bike, or you can interpret that it's supposed to be a bike. Now let's do the inverse. We have a little uh, <laughs> model here. Could be a lollipop, could be a tree. In this case, it is a tree. So as you can see, we can basically always simplify complex objects by thinking about the most simple shapes that we can come up with to recreate them. And the basic shape that we usually use in 3D are these ones here, the block, the sphere, the cylinder, the cone, and the ring. Now let's make it a little bit more complex, a head. Ooh. <laughs> I think the simplest way we could simplify this is like this. Looks very, very simple. And I think if you would start with this, I think it would still be very complex to go from here to here. So, you know, it's always good to not only have two steps from beginning to end, but breaking up the transition from one to the other. So we could, you know, make another in-between, I guess, simplification, which adds a little bit more complexity, but makes it easier to understand the transition from ultra simple to, you could call it ultra complex. Of course, as a beginner especially, it can still be very hard to go from here to here. So you can, of course, always still simplify this, for example, add another sort of in-between model so you can understand the shapes and how they contribute to the overall shape and how it gets complexer and complexer until you can reach the end, which is the head. The reason why we want to simplify it into these individual shapes is because these individual shapes have very distinct shadows and these we can, I guess, learn and then we can use them to understand more complex shapes. So if you, for example, were to go in here, we can see we have another way we can simplify the head or we can go from simplified to very complex. But what we can also see is that the big shapes that we have in the most simple simplification, whatever, <laughs> um, they're still there in the most complex version. I guess the easiest one would be the chin, the jawline in general. It is still there over here. Why we can see that is because of the shadow right here that is right there. The shape of the shadow doesn't really change over here. Same with the line going from here to here. It's a little harder here, but we can see it starts here and then goes around. You can especially see it here with this shadow and then it goes around and goes down like this. But of course, we can not only see these lines here in the most simple and the most complex version, we can also see them in between. So these lines, of course, transition through all the stages of simplification. Now, of course, what we want to do is we want to break up the most simple shape so that we can create more complex shapes. So basically, this big shape right here has been broken up into different parts. For example, the nose is right here. You can see it pretty clearly, especially with the shadow underneath. Of course, we can also see that over here. And we also have the nose, of course, over here. And then, of course, after breaking it up into slightly more complex shapes, we can then go even deeper and make it even more complex. I guess you could say from big shapes to medium shapes to small shapes. We can see here we don't really have eyes yet. It looks kind of like they're closed. <laughs> but now we break up these this big part right here even more and make an eyelid as well as the actual opening of the eye out of that, which, of course, we can then see in the final version as well. And the reason why every sculptor should learn this skill as fast as possible is because then it is way, way easier to analyze the references that you have in front of you or that you want to use and understand them correctly. And it'll just make it way, way easier to translate what you can see in the 2D image over to the 3D world, I guess, into your 3D sculpt. And you could even use the workflow going from super simple to very complex in your own workflow. I, for example, start every sculpt that I do, at least if it's from scratch, with a sphere. And then, of course, I try to first, in the first sculpting stage, add the most basic shapes that we've seen before. For example, the shape for the chin, the shape for the jaw, for example, and then, of course, also the shape for the neck. The most broad shapes are also the most important shapes. So if the biggest shapes don't look right, you can believe me that the uh, <laughs> then the following complexities, I guess, won't look right as well. So you really have to make sure that the biggest shapes look correct. And it's also easier to see if the biggest shapes look correct if you're working from a, from a very simple to a very complex model. And then see if I need to fi fix something, like for example, the proportions or the shapes, just to see that everything looks correct 
Of course, they're probably going to change a little bit in the later stages, but it's still important to have a good foundation you can work with. Of course, in this sculpt, I tried to make the different parts, the different simple parts as obvious as possible, but of course, you don't have to do that for every sculpt that you do. You just have to be aware of all the different simple objects that you would use to create the simplest form of a head. After I'm happy with the first stage, I then go and create the second stage. First, of course, I kind of try to determine the proportions. I usually do that in my head, but here, for example, I've done it to show you what I'm kind of thinking about. And then I usually begin with the eye hole. So basically, you know, breaking up the huge head shape into the individual parts of the face. First adding the eyes, then adding the nose, cutting away areas that you don't need anymore. And then of course, once again, with every stage, I try to make sure that not only the proportions look right, but also the different shapes look correct. So for example, if the nose looks kind of weird, I would then adjust it. Of course, it always comes with practice. So the more you do it, the better you get at it. Of course, what the simplified shapes represent are the different muscles and fat and bone layers that are sitting on top of each other. Learning these through, for example, anatomy books can be very useful, but of course it can also be very complex and very daunting, especially in the beginning. So I probably wouldn't recommend going and doing that immediately. I think I would at least try to get comfortable creating the second stage, so basically this stage, before I would look into anatomy books. I think anatomy books are very useful, especially if you want to learn the third stage where you break up the medium shapes into the detailed small shapes. Before that, it, I think it, it's just too complex. I think what can also be very useful in the beginning is, as I do here, drawing in the different parts of the model with, for example, the crease brush, rather than, for example, just using the clay strips brush. I actually do that still, for example, for the muscles. So I would basically always recommend doing that. And then after breaking up the big shapes into the medium shapes and tweaking the proportions, I then go over to the detailed shapes. So for example, I break up the nose into the different nostrils and the nose tip. I add the eyes. Right now we only have the eye socket basically. I smooth everything out a little bit more, give it a little bit more volume. One thing I wouldn't recommend is going from super simple to super complex immediately only in one area. So for example, you probably practice only sculpting the nose. If you then need to go back to creating the medium shapes for the rest of the head it can get kind of messy maybe you even see that the medium shapes don't look right for the nose for example so you have to revert back to the previous medium shape of the nose which can just kind of get quite messy of course the more complexity you have the more details you also need for example i use dynamic topology here i would then also increase the resolution for my dynamic topology i usually use steps from maybe 20 then more detailed 50 and then if i go into super fine details maybe even 75 or maybe even 100 for the very fine details but i would never start with a resolution of 75 because you don't really need that much to create the simplest shape and it's also easier to create the simplest shapes that way. The more geometry you have, the harder it is to smooth out, for example, the broad shapes. So I would always recommend increasing the sculpting resolution as you go higher in complexity. Of course, to make it look like an actual real person, you then have to go from the very geometric look where you draw the individual parts or where you separate the individual parts with like a crease brush, for example. You would then have to smooth them out again so you don't have these very deep creases everywhere so that it looks more natural. The reason why I think this is one of the most important skills to learn as an artist in general, not only a sculptor, is because you can break everything basically up into a simpler version. Another good example where you can use this is to create the hair for your characters. I explained my workflow of doing that, which is very simple to this one, in a recent video. If you want to check that out, it's the video here on the left. If you have any more questions, make sure to put them in the comments. Thank you for watching. Maybe I'll see you next time. See ya.